Hi, I'm Deanna Springer with a fun Stitch It Sisters surging project. First, we'll introduce our Stitch It Sisters guest, Pam Mashey. You may have tuned into Soy with Nancy and watched as Nancy and Pam explored the basics of using a serger overlocker and beyond. Welcome back to Stitch It Sisters, Pam. Thanks, Deanna. It's always great to be here with the NZP team and Stitch It Sisters. You know, today we're going to be doing some decorative surging and functional surging as well. We're going to be using a clever cover stitch bag pattern that we've put together for you. And we're going to feature chain and cover stitching along with both decorative and functional uses. Plus a new flat construction method and four thread overlock stitching to put our bag all together. So let's take a look at all the elements we're going to be using to make this great bag. We'll be surging our Clever Cover Stitch bag with beautiful Bannertex Daisy Delight fabrics by Greta Lynn for Canvas Studio, June Taylor Stark Savvy, Schmetz Chrome Top Stitching Needles in size 90, Clover's Chalk Aligner and 5-in-1 Sliding Gauge, a 3 quarter inch Fast Turn, our new Clever Cover Stitch sewing pattern, and our Bernina L890 Air Threading Serger. To make our Clever Cover Stitch bag, we'll start with selecting our fabrics. We've selected Benertex Daisy Delight Fabrics by Greta Lynn for Canvas Studio. We'll prepare our fabrics by heading to the ironing board and pre-shrinking our fabrics. A classic time-saving tip by Nancy Zeman. Pre-shrink your fabrics by steaming and pressing and then spray starch and press again. Press and starch and press and starch. Now that we've starched our fabrics, we're ready to cut them out. So let's take a look at all of the elements that we're going to need in order to put our bag together. So first, we're going to look at the top portion of the bag. Here, we need two pieces. And remember, we're constructing the front and the back of our bag. So we'll need two pieces that are measuring 3 inches by 16 inches wide of the tone-on-tone -tone fabric. We're also going to cut two pieces of the Pellon Flex Foam, which is fusible on one side, the same size, 3 by 16 inches. Then we're going to move to the bottom portion of our bag. That's that beautiful Daisy Delight fabric that you mentioned earlier, Deanna. And we're going to be using this piece that is measuring 10 inches by 16 inches. Again, two pieces of that. One for the front bag and, and one, one for, for the, the back. back. That's right. Same thing, you want to make sure that you do also have two pieces of foam, that flex foam, cut 10 by 16 inches in size. And that's what really makes the bag a stand-up bag. It that does. Flex foam. It gives it that great mm -hmm. structure that mm -hmm. we're going to be needing. And we're going to be able to sew through it like butter when we go over to our serger as well. So that's the front and back of our bag. Next, we're going to be looking at our handle elements. So the first piece of fabric that we're going to be looking at is again a solid piece or that tone-on-tone -tone fabric that we use in the handle and it's going to be measuring two and three quarters inches wide by the width of your fabric. And no matching foam for that piece. No matching foam for that, mm -hmm. but we will use foam and that print, the Daisy Delight fabric, and we're going to be cutting this two and a half inches wide by 22 inches. Now I mentioned that the foam is fusible. So we're going to fuse this all together and I'm just going to move this out of the way so that you can see once we have this fused in place, we're going to take those that, that two and a half inch piece and we're going to cut it in half. So we'll have two pieces that are one and one quarter inches in size. It makes it so much easier to fuse that two and a half right. inch strip than it is narrow strips. Sure, and it's it's cutting it once and yeah. then fusing it together with just an iron mm -hmm. and then separating it, cutting it. So cutting it into two segments for our two straps. For our two straps, exactly. We're also going to be using a piece of uh, jumbo rickrack. And this jumbo rickrack, you'll have a yard piece and keep it at the yard. We're going to sew it and then trim it as we sew it in place. 
and then we have two pieces of lining that measure 16 inches wide by 15 inches tall. And when we look at the bag, we can see that lining peeking mm -hmm. out. It peeks out just to the front of the bag, and your construction techniques for the handles are really unique, those two color handles, and I can't wait for you to show that to us. So right. the first steps were to cut out the pieces mm -hmm. and then fuse. You talked about fusing this. Now we fuse our fabrics to the front of the pieces, and this is the flex foam. This is the first time we've worked with this on Stitch It Sisters. I'm glad you brought this to us. Yes. It's a Pellon product that's, mm -hmm. that's flexible yet stand-up and it has uh, almost a quarter inch thickness to it, a Correct. foam, Correct. and it's fusible on just one, one side. side. So a little tip on using that foam, sometimes it's it might be a little hard for you to decide what side is fusible or not. It does feel a little more rough mm -hmm. on the fusible side. However, you can just take the tip of your iron and just tap the corner, and if you feel that it's a little tacky, well then you know that that's going to be the fusible mm -hmm. side. So position your fabrics and place wrong sides of your fabric to the fusible side of your flex foam, and that would be for all of those elements and pieces that we're working with. Whichever pieces we've cut a piece of fabric and a piece, and of, a piece flex of foam foam for, for matching will fuse all of those into place over at the ironing board. Correct. And you could use a pressing cloth, a June Taylor pressing cloth, yes. to press these into place. But mm -hmm. as long as you have that glue covered, you can easily press. Just make sure, like you said, that the fusible isn't touching your ironing, ironing board, board or you'll fuse it to your ironing yes. board. Yes, and we all know we've mm -hmm. done that done before. That once. I did also want to mention, we were talking about cutting, and we have a large 60 millimeter rotary cutter here. Because we are cutting, and as you mentioned, that foam is about a quarter of an inch thick, so that it cuts completely through when you're cutting all of these elements and it doesn't give you, it gives you a nice smooth cut rather than a jagged cut. Using this larger rotary cutter is also going to be beneficial to you. It's great. That thickness of that blade cuts right through the foam and it's easy to cut. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It cuts through very, very easily. Mm -hmm. All right. So after we've cut our pieces and fused we'll, them and all fuse together, them, the next step is the next step marking. Is to mark them. Mm -hmm. So let's take these pieces away. I'll set these over here for later surging them together. Right. And what we're going to do is show you some of the marking. So we started with the top of the bag, and here you can see that all of our elements are fused together. And since we started in the first area, you're looking at the top of our bag, let's look at the top of the bag right away. So we have these elements fused in place, and on the top part of our bag, you're going to measure in, and we're going to be using a friction marking pen to draw our line, and we'll measure in an inch and a half, so through the middle. So just follow that just line. Just right down the center of that rectangle, and we've turned our bag on the side. Side, You can see it's on its side, but right. stitch or mark a stitching line right down the center of both, both the front pieces. and, and back. The back. That's mm -hmm. right. But the dark friction pen will not work so nicely on the dark fabrics. Correct, correct. So here, we're going to be using the Clover Chalk Aligner uh, pen, and we're going to be drawing some lines on there. So as we mentioned here, we drew the lines on the underside or on the foam, and here we're going to be drawing the lines on the right side of our fabric. So you can cho choose any distance you want between your lines. You can choose the angle that you want on your lines as well. I chose the spacing of one and a half inches apart, and I chose the angle of 60 degrees. And that angle is marked right on the ruler. Yeah, right there so on right the, there ruler. the ruler. Yeah, and it's the 60 degree mark. You can mark. see that. And when you choose your angle, it, many times 60 degrees isn't one of those angles that we use very often but it does give a very pleasing angle, and sometimes the smaller the area that you're working with, more of a severe angle that you might want to use on your project. So simply, we lay the 60 degree along the edge of our fabric, and then just simply take 
the chalk a liner and draw a nice line. And you can see how nice that line is going and to show chalk up. chalk line, that'll disappear as we stitch and sew through it. Yeah. And what you're doing, are you're creating the marking lines for the quilting that we'll be quilting with our serger. Right, exactly. So we just lay our ruler down and fill your fabric piece in both directions, as you can see here, to fill that fabric piece up. It's like a designer. We're putting together a designer quilted bag. That's right. That's so when right. you turn it, uh, orientate it like the bag would be, this is your top, mm -hmm. top front, lower front, right? And then the back of the bag is the, exactly the same. the same thing. That's right. Any more marking we need to do? Nope, we don't need any more marking. We have our handles ready to go. We have our front and back of our bag and the top portion of our bag. So now it's time for us to go over to the machine, get it set up, and start sewing. Next, we'll stitch our clever cover stitch bag. Pam, let's review the machine setup. Okay, perfect. Well, we're going to start with a chain stitch. On the bottom portion of our bag, on those lines that we drew earlier, and when we look at the screen, you're going to notice that we have the two thread chain stitch set up. There are some settings that we can change on the screen. And one of the most important is the needle down because when you are stitching and you're stitching on those lines, if you need to reposition your hands or the fabric, you don't want to slide the fabric forward or back or change the angle of that stitch. So by lowering your needle in the down position, it'll always stop it's in the down feature, position. It's a great feature and it anchors the fabric to the anchors machine. Anchors the fabric to the machine, absolutely. And our stitch length, we are going to increase that stitch length to the longest setting because then as we're sewing on that heavier fabric, we want a little bit longer stitch and nothing that's going to bunch up the stitches. So once I have that set, I'm also going to then come to the top of the machine and here I have the pressure adjustment knob that I can adjust and make that a lower setting. So again, accommodating for that thicker fabric and it doesn't push down quite as heavy. And that's on the, the pressure, pressure on the pressure, presser foot. Presser foot, that's right. That's kind of a tongue mm -hmm. twister when we say that. <laughs> All right, then let's come across and look at our threads that we're going to be working with. So today we're going to be learning about some decorative stitch techniques. And we're using a 12 weight decorative thread, this time in our needle. For this technique, it will be in our needle. And in our chain looper, we're going to be using standard overlock thread. So once we have the thread in position and we've already threaded our machine here so we can get started with sewing, I want you to come down and look at the needle. The needle itself, and we have some packages mm -hmm. of needles over there also, Deanna. We're going to be working with the Schmetz Chrome Top Stitching Needle. And the reason we're using a top stitching needle here is because it has a much larger eye in it and it will accommodate those heavier threads that we're going to be working with in the needle. And also, when you're working with, the, with your serger, typically, and when we change out of top stitching, we are going to be then changing to the ELX705 needle, which is the proper needle to use when you're doing overall surging. Design, designed for sergers. Designed for mm -hmm. sergers, that's right. Now, I like to use a size 90 needle uh, the majority of the time that I'm stitching. And especially today, because we're working on the foam and lots of heavier fabrics that we're working we with. We have some layers here. We're gonna have a, a number of layers The serger there. can handle it. No problem at all. No problem there. Now also the presser foot that I'm working with is going to be the standard presser foot. Even though we're working with a chain stitch and your machine does have a chain stitch foot, we are going to be working with the standard presser foot because we have more lines that are on that foot and that's going to help us as we're guiding on those marks that we had stitched previously. We also have the flat sewing table on because we are going to be sewing this time in the middle of our fabric. And that's really something that is different from when you look at standard sergers or overlocks, you always think about sewing on the edge and cutting well now, we're going to sew in the middle of our fabrics and create those decorative lines of stitching. And the Bernina L890 is both 
a standard four thread overlocker like Renault, yep. a serger, and also a cover stitch machine. So you call it a combo machine. So we call it a combo machine, absolutely. And again, we are going to be using all the different stitches on that cover stitch side throughout our project. So let's get started and do some stitching. So as you stitch, I'm going to lower the presser foot and I have the needle in the left, excuse me, in the right sewing position. And it lines up with the third mark that's on the toe of our presser foot. Now you can use any of those needle positions and there are three needle positions for chain stitching. This time with our project uh, and the number of changes we're going to be making, I just started with it in the left sewing position. So again, you have a freehand system that you can raise the presser foot up and still maintain control of your fabric. Then lower your foot. I'm gonna put my glasses on here at that stage where I need to use my glasses. And now all I'm gonna do is stitch. Now you notice that there might be a little bit louder popping sound that you hear because you're sewing through all those layers the fusible as well as the foam. So now you can chain off a little bit and then clip your thread. Now the consecutive lines of stitching, I'm not going to raise my foot, but I just simply raise the toe of my presser foot with my finger and slide it back up under the foot. Because if you ever have any, uh, if you've ever noticed that you might end up as you start to stitch, with your chain and or cover stitching. And there might be a few stitches that are uh, skipped at the beginning. Right, they don't exactly chain they when don't you're e stitching on air. Exactly, the chain stitch mm -hmm. doesn't. So you lifted the toe and you pushed the fabric as close to the needle as you could. Correct, and then when you stitch, you don't end up with those stitches that are missing at the beginning of your stitches. So we'll just do one more. And again, you can chain off when you're working with the chain stitch. So we just simply lift the toe of the foot, scoot it up right to in front of the needle. And because we have this large space, the five and a half inches of space, you're able to stitch all the way across your piece of fabric as you're filling it. And you would fill in both directions. And you're stitching on the right side of the fabric, the side that mm -hmm. you marked. Mm -hmm. The right side of our fabric mm -hmm. is facing up. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, here's our finished sample. You'll be able to see that we stitched on all of those lines going completely across our fabric. And it gives you that beautiful texture. You can, mm -hmm. it, you can feel the, the, the quilting. That foam makes all uh -huh. the difference. The and it gives the bag kind of the body. And it also looks like you purchased this fabric quilted. Mm -hmm. And not all quilted fabrics are available in all, all the fabrics. Right, the fashion fabrics that you'd like. Right, and, mm -hmm. and especially not on foam. Right, and not on foam. Yeah. So here's the reverse side. Oh, and I wanted to mention to you too, I always like to flip it over before I move on to just to make sure that I have all the lines stitched. Because sometimes you may Mm -hmm. get all, feel like you have all your lines stitched mm -hmm. and then change to another setting and then before you are sewing it together mm -hmm. you're like oh shoot I forgot right and we're sewing line. with black thread on back black background fabric so mm -hmm. it's kind of a tonal feature so if you were sewing with a white or a yellow or something you'd contrasting you'd that. be able to sure. see it but I like that mm -hmm. tip great tip to make sure you've hit all your lines by looking at the back looking quilting. At the back side. Beautiful. That's right. Okay so next we're going to hold, I'm going to have you hold on to oh, that great. because we are going to be using that in okay. just one and minute. As we can tell, this is the bag lower right. front. Now don't forget that you're going mm. to be doing this on both pieces. So one piece for your front and one piece for your back. So you'll fill up both of those pieces with that line of stitching. Now I am going to be changing my chain looper thread. So I'm just going to cut the chain looper thread and I'm going to tap the back end of my foot pedal and that's going to raise up the presser foot, or, excuse me, raise up the needle and I'm just going to pull the thread out. Now, if you're pulling on your thread and you find that it is a little bit too tight, what I recommend that you do is just reach over to your hand wheel and 
generally you turn your hand wheel towards, towards you. you. But now we're going to turn it one time backwards and whoop, like magic, you free up it the just threads. Frees up the threads and pulls them right out. So we're taking out the thread, the standard sewing thread in our chain looper. And I'm going to this time place the contrasting thread. And if Deanna, mm -hmm. you would show them on the bag there. Right, so you're we, inserting the white 12 weight right? and thread, this, the sulky 12 weight cotton. Yes, the and white. this thread, or this stitch that we're doing, is mm -hmm. exactly the same stitch as we had on the bottom. Although it looks different. It looks different mm -hmm. because when you stitched earlier, or when we drew our lines earlier. When we did our marking. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. We actually, I'm going to wait and sh have them show you how great this is for threading. Let me finish showing you, sharing with you. We drew our line on the wrong side mm -hmm. of our our upper bag. Of our upper bag. So remember, bag. we drew that line on the wrong side mm -hmm. so that when we stitch, the beautiful stitches will be on the on right the side. On the right side. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, so here's, here's our 12 weight thread. We're just simply going to step on the foot pedal. I've engaged my threading tubes. Step on our foot pedal. Let the machine pull that thread right through. And there you go. It just whisks Amazing. that 12 weight thread right through. What I really like about the L890 is you can thread in any order. Mm -hmm. It used to be we had to start on the left and work to the right and do it just in the right order. It didn't right. chain. Yeah, absolutely right. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to even unthread our needle right. or pull the thread out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I re-threaded the machine. Okay. Same exact settings that we had before. And I am going to take my strip of fabric, this time sewing on the underside or from the back side of that fabric. And again, aligning it with the same mark that we have on the toe of our presser foot. And you simply stitch. And just let the machine feed the fabric through all by itself. It stitches beautifully. And there we go. And there it is. So there it is. That mm -hmm. is the chain stitch. And again, all exactly the same settings that we had, except we're sewing on the underside the of our side fabric. Of the fabric. Mm -hmm. So that chain stitch uh, was black thread before you changed it to white and stitched that. Correct. Correct. Okay, now we have a new technique that we're going to share with you. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a technique where we're going to this time join our upper bag to the lower part of our bag. And to do that, we are going to be using a wide cover stitch. So this will take an adjustment on the machine. So when we make the adjustment to this stitch, we're simply going to go into the guided mode on the machine, which is a feature I absolutely love because so many times we're not exactly sure how to make a change from one stitch to another but everything is built right in. I don't have to find the manual or no, look online. I, I mean, if mm -hmm. your sewing room is like mine, you don't mm -hmm. even know where the manual is, 90% of the time. So I call this the GPS of sewing because it takes you from where you are to where you want to go, just like a GPS would uh, that we're on familiar with on a sure. car trip. That's right. So we touch the guided mode, and I'm going to go in, and I'm going to select my wide cover stitch Okay, and it takes me through step by step exactly what I need to do. So the first thing it's going to do is say to cut the threads. Sometimes that's really scary on your machine to cut the threads. Then we're going to unthread both our chain looper and our and our needle, and we're going to uh, make the adjustment back to the standard setting. Now, I know I'm sewing on the foam, so I don't want to change this to the number so four setting. So you can setting. override it so for your So you can fabric. override it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're just advancing the screens and it's built-in tutorial. Absolutely. Telling us. And it's telling us exactly where we need to go. So now I'm just going to raise my needle and my needle that I had in the left position will remain there. So I don't have to move that needle, but I am going to introduce a needle into the right, the furthest 
excuse me, the furthest left sewing position. So just simply slide that needle in, tighten the screw to hold it in place. And then I like to keep my tools right in the spot that they belong in so then I know, you know where, where they, they are. are the next time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now we're going to look through a couple more slides and we really don't need to make any adjustments simply because we know that they're already set for the cover stitch position. All of those are already set and we just simply move forward through to the threading positions. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be placing our thread in the left needle position and while I'm doing this I'm just going to touch that little video camera that's on there so even if you're not exactly sure how to thread it's going to show you step by step how to thread the machine which I absolutely love and it just makes it so much easier for anyone that is going to be working with setting up their machines. And there's a video with each step so if mm -hmm. you forget where that pressure foot presser is, yep, yep. and you just watch the video. Exactly, exactly. So you just watch the video and you can stop it at any point also and do the action and then go ahead and touch the forward mm -hmm. and it will go ahead and continue to show you. So we'll do exactly the same thing then for the right cover stitch needle position. So you're putting standard serger standard or overlap serger thread. thread? Standard serger thread in both needles. In both needles. Mm -hmm. And actually I'm going to place standard overlock thread also into my chain looper this time. It's so easy to change threads. You, you just moved a needle position um, and re-threaded and double checking against the tutorial that we are, our machine is set for the correct settings. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's step by step so you mm -hmm. don't have to fear, you mm -hmm. don't have to fear the change right. anymore. It's not scary anymore. No. Nope. And the pattern shows you exactly which stitch we're stitching where. So you, you can follow the pattern. You don't have to remember that we're doing a narrow cover stitch and a wide cover stitch. It's included in the pattern. Right, right. And it'll show you step by step how to do that. Now, we're simply going to take, and I'm going to have you move mm -hmm. that bag off to the side there, Deanna. So here's the lower bag. That's the lower bag. And this is our upper bag that mm -hmm. has the chain stitch already sewn on mm -hmm. it. And we're going to join these two right. pieces but together. But you're not going to place them right side together and make a seam that would we're be too not. bulky. Right. So mm -hmm. if we look at our bag, that construction is completely flat because we then have the rick rack that we mm -hmm. place on top. So you can't see the seam we're stitching right now, mm -hmm. but, but we're going to show, you show us just a twice. Minute. Yeah, we're going to show it to you right now. So as we stitch, we are going to be kissing or placing both edges, the top and the bottom uh, of our bag, we're placing those together just so the, the, they meet mm -hmm. together. This is a great spot for your hands free sewing. You have your Absolutely. knee lifter so that's I lifting can, your presser foot yeah, up and down. Yeah. So it raises and lowers my presser foot and the center mark that is on the toe of the foot, that's where I'm going to guide that center line of stitching. One needle's in the lower fabric, one needle's in the upper bag fabric. Correct, correct. And as I stitch, I'm just holding those two pieces snug together. Letting the machine take letting it. Letting the machine take it and pull it through. And just keeping my eye on the front of that presser foot so that it lines up right through the middle and your fabric stay kissed together. Uh-huh, they stay kissed together. Mm -hmm. Now, you might look at this and mm -hmm. go, well, ooh, that's a little that, wiggly. Is that sturdy enough, Pam? That's not gonna be sturdy enough. Mm -hmm. So, what we're gonna do is flip our fabric over. Let's, sh let's show the back. So your, your double needle, or your two needle stitching is on the other side, on the right side. This is the underside. That is the underside, mm -hmm. okay? Now, this is typically a stitch that you would probably mm -hmm. use for mm -hmm. hemming, right. a, se a, hemming a, a hem mm -hmm. on a garment, and it's called a cover stitch because mm -hmm. it covers the hem, covers the raw edge mm -hmm. of your fabric hem. On the underside, so it's the double needle on the top, the two needles, and then the underside is that 
cover stitch cover covering it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. But you're not and you're not using it for knits. You're using it on. I'm using it for this, and I'm using and it for cotton fabric and, and for and construction. For construction. Okay. So now we're going to stitch, and this time when I stitch, I am going to shorten my stitch length down to about. 2.5 middle two and you flip area. the fabric over and I flip the fabric over so now when I stitch I can align the needles the stitching that's already there I can align it so, so it's kind of straddled between the two the first mark and the third mark that's on the presser foot itself all right so now as I stitch it's going to be stitching over that line of stitching once again. Okay, I'm going to pull my foot pedal back a little bit so I can sew a little bit faster. And typically you will not get a chain off with your fabric, but look at how much mm -hmm. stronger. It's a stand-up bag now. Yeah. And that's, that's you've double stitched that, duplicate mm -hmm. stitch, so mm -hmm. that's that's a sturdy seam. You right. could leave it like that. And and you know where those, mm -hmm. the same kind of seaming mm -hmm. technique is done? Mm -hmm. Active wear. Active wear. Mm -hmm. So leggings and right. all of that active wear or Our yoga pants. Leisure, your yoga pants. leisure. That's right. Mm -hmm. You That's the same kind of construction mm -hmm. that they have on those projects or on those garments. So it's we know that those are it sturdy and secure. Mm -hmm. So again, don't forget that you're going to be doing this on two pieces. Mm -hmm. We're just doing it on one just to show you how it's done. So now we have our bottom, the top and the bottom of our bag is joined together. The front bag. The front part of our bag, and mm -hmm. you would do the same thing to the back part mm -hmm. of your bag. All right, so let me just set that kind of on the side there for you. So the reason we're doing it in this order is because you're setting the machine once for a single needle chain stitch. You're setting the machine once for a wide cover stitch. Correct. Now we're going to set to a narrow cover stitch. Now the narrow cover stitch is again super easy and here on our project we see that the yellow stitching mm -hmm. and we see the rickrack has been stitched in place. Both of them are stitched. Right. Again, one from the right side and one from the underside. So here's what I'm mm -hmm. going to do. I'm going to do a little trick here and just simply take my needle and move it from the far left. You left it threaded. I learned this from you, and it's like light bulb moment. Why didn't uh, I like, think of that? Yeah. Because I've dropped needles into the serger, and oh, then yeah. you have to unplug and get a flashlight and get them right? out. So I'm leaving mm -hmm. it threaded. Mm -hmm. It can't fall in. I, it can't fall in, mm -hmm. and all I'm going to need to do is come onto the screen, and I'm going to get rid of that stitch, and I'm going to select my narrow cover stitch this time. And I can touch expert mode because that's all I've had to do is move my needle. Now I have a completely different stitch mm -hmm. and it is a narrow cover stitch. So now we're going to be attaching the rickrack onto mm -hmm. our... We'll the, cover that seam. Uh -huh, we're going to cover that seam. So now we are using uh, the black thread. Just for simplicity and we didn't mm -hmm. have to make another change. Oh, you know what change I am going to make though? I am going to change my presser foot this time. I'm going mm. to change my presser foot to a clear foot because now when I stitch, I'm going to be able to see that rickrack underneath as I stitch and know that I'm stitching in the proper place. Mm -hmm. Brick rag kind of a zigzag trim, kind so you want to stitch right down the middle and catch right, that. Right, right. Now, when we stitch this, we're using a black thread, again, for simplicity on camera. But if you decided that you wanted to have your thread match exactly to your Rick rag, then simply change mm -hmm. your needle threads. Mm -hmm. And you've given us permission to use standard sewing thread in our needles too. Absolutely, mm -hmm. because if you're working with a 
large cone of thread. It isn't that you always have to use cone thread on mm -hmm. your sergers either. You can use standard spools of thread, especially mm -hmm. in those colors that you may not be using on a regular basis. Sure, fashion colors. Yeah, we don't exactly. need the, the three-ply thread when we're doing seams with a serger, but you can certainly uh, do your decorative st top stitching and decorative stitches right. with so threads. As I stitch, I'm going to be stitching this a little bit slower, and I'm just going to lift the rickrack up and lay it down so that I know it's right on top of that seam that I had stitched previously. No pinning. No pinning. Mm -hmm. No. You can see exactly where you're stitching and where it's heading because of the clear foot. Right. Now if you wanted to get really creative and follow these lines, you could do that because you can still maneuver that rickrack underneath your presser foot if you prefer to, to follow mm -hmm. the rickrack itself. We could never do curves or pivot before with a serger that wasn't a cover stitch because our knife is engaged and it just wasn't possible. Right. So what I typically would do, we had on, uh, when we talked about the elements, we had you keep that piece of rickrack at the full one yard mm -hmm. length. Mm -hmm. So if I would be doing this for both pieces, I would leave my rickrack piece attached and I would take the next the other chain side stitch it. and so chain, just chain stitch, stitch it. it like we do with our quilting blocks. That's right. So you just Great place tip. those two together and just keep on stitching so that it continues and so you have you a make, front and you have and a back. the back or That's the right. other front. That's right. Okay. So now we just chain off. All right. And we have our rick rack attached. Mm -hmm. I do like the black decorative thread accent too. Yeah. And this one is is just with the yellow thread. So mm -hmm. it's your choice. If you want to throw, show those stitches off, you'd use a contrasting thread. Exactly. Depends on your confidence mm -hmm. level and what you're wanting and mm -hmm. pop maybe the color of thread you have available right. at home. <laughs> right? Okay. Now, when we look at our bag one more time, you're going to notice that we have that same narrow cover stitch, yet in a decorative mm -hmm. application. So guess what we're going to do? We are going to cut our chain looper thread just one more time and I am going to change my presser foot back to the standard presser foot. So pull this out and again if you need help along the way, all you need to do is use that guided mode that's on your machine and you would be able to, it would help you follow through the setup of the stitch and how to uh, insert other threads or needles in different stitch positions. So now we're simply removing the thread from the chain looper. We're going to this time place our yellow thread on the chain looper position. And I'm going to engage for threading step on your foot pedal, hover that thread, let it go, and the machine will just pull it right through the machine. Check and there, that it came out the there you have it. loop or tube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to take our mm -hmm. bag. Right, you don't have yellow stitches on yours yet. I don't have yellow stitches. So to create those yellow stitches and not have to worry about putting any mm -hmm. lines, all I'm going to do is simply take my fabric piece and position it right on the left edge of my presser foot. Here again I can use my freehand system and I have my stitch already selected on the machine so all I have to do is stitch. Now you can make an adjustment to this stitch if you want to. You can lengthen the stitch, you can shorten the stitch depending upon how dense you want that stitch to look on the right side of your bag. Okay. So now that we've stitched, you can see that we have one yellow line of stitching there. Mm -hmm. Okay, super easy. Now we'll take our bag again and this time, Deanna, if you would hand me a couple of clips. clips. I like if I'm stitching and I have to stitch over something that might be a little bit wider mm -hmm. than the area that I'm that I have open on my machine. I'll roll this up 
and take some wonder clips and just clip it in place. And that just holds it and prevents it from scooting out or pushing against the inside edge, inside arm of your machine. And you're guiding the foot along that center stitch line again. Mm -hmm. Just using the width of the presser foot. And your lines will mm -hmm. differ mm -hmm. in uh, distance from the edge of your presser foot, depending upon which needle positions you're going to be working with also. And it's a surprise every time you stitch a seam, a row of stitches, because the beauty is built on the underside. I know, mm -hmm. sometimes that's the hardest part, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. just making sure that, mm -hmm. I mean, the anticipation of looking at those stitches mm -hmm. once you have it stitched. So again, you would do this to the other side, mm -hmm. so you have a front, front and, and you the have back. the back side of your bag. Mm -hmm. All right, so all of our cover stitching is completed on the decorative side of our bag. So far, all we've done is decorative uh, cover stitching. Mm -hmm. We've right. done decorative cover stitching mm -hmm. and, and that flat construction. construction. That That's flat. your new method of construction. That flat construction, I really, like I that. really I, as I was putting this bag together, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, how can we be more efficient in working with all of mm -hmm. these different stitches? So making that flat construction just helped us uh, move through right. and use the stitches in, in different ways. So next, we are going to be moving over to the overlock side of our stitches. And here again, by using that guided mode, we're going to actually make a, a large change on our machines, but we don't have to be fearful of that change because everything is built right in for us. So what I like to do is leave my threads on the machine because I know I'm going to be using all of those positions that my needle threads are in. I can again just make sure my needles are in the highest position and follow along on the screen. So lift your presser foot, you're going to unthread, and again, you can unthread your needles and your chain looper just simply by pulling on those threads and they'll come right out of your machine. And if they do get a little bit stuck, you can either cut them or just turn your hand wheel and it will pull those threads right out. Next. We have the presser foot on, the standard presser foot already, and we are going to change that pressure back to the number four setting, just as it has here. If again you don't know where those adjustments are made, just touch that little video camera and it's going to show you exactly how that's done. Very clever. Moving on, we're going to move our needles from the cover stitch position to the overlock position. So now when we do this, having your foot move out of the way is a big benefit so that you can access the position of your needles. Okay. Just slide those needles out. Make sure you tighten up the screws on your cover stitch needles as you move them over. And you will be placing the needles in the left needle position for overlock stitching and also for the right. Now if at any point you are, you have both of your needles out and you are not able to slide one of the needles in individually, just loosen the opposite screw and that's going to allow the needle to slide right Move into right position. Into place. Mm -hmm. And this is the stitch we're most familiar with, this four thread overlock stitch for garment construction, for constructing quilts. I know you even sew quilts with oh, yeah. your yeah. four thread. For the piecing, mm -hmm. to do the piecing. And I like to do that because the four thread, in, or the right needle thread, actually helps compress your seam so that it holds it flatter. And that's why it's so important on these heavy fabrics, the foam especially, where we use a four thread stitch, it will help compress that seam and it will be much flatter. Good point. Okay, next, we're going to raise our cutting blade. And because we have a nine millimeter wide stitch on our machines, our cutting blade comes up so much higher and it accommodates this heavy foam that we're going to be working with also. 
Okay, we are going to be constructing our handles first. So on the instructions, you'll see that we want you to adjust your width of your stitch to eight. Here on, uh, on the screen, it says six, but again, for our technique, we're going to change that to eight. We're also going to slide off the cover that is for flat sewing or cover stitch sewing. And we're going to slide on what's called a knife cover. That's a quick changeover. Very quick. Mm -hmm. And we want to engage our upper looper. So we just simply turn this little lever over and our upper looper comes into sewing position. We want to make sure this is set on overlock. So it, do, it doesn't leave anything for you to guess. Now it's time to thread. So we are going to take that decorative thread off of the machine that we had earlier, and we're going to place our standard overlock thread in all of our positions for the lower looper, for the upper looper, for the right needle, and for the left needle. So we just have all of those threads in position. And it does again, does not matter what order you thread your machine in. I just prefer to move from left to right, kind of like you're reading. So we can uh, set your needles first. And you do have a little needle threader that comes with your machine that you can use to thread the needle itself. And you're still using the top stitching needles, but this, uh, would you switch to the ELX needles if you wanted yep. to? Yep, you can mm -hmm. use the... Because we're using standard thread. Correct, correct. So you wouldn't have to use the, you wouldn't have to use your uh, top stitching needles. Now, if you're, you, you are using the, uh, when you have your needles in position, I just moved from one uh, move the needle from the overlock position, cover stitch position. But again, you have your needles all in the front mm -hmm. of the machine, which is going to They're be right on board, right on board mm -hmm. and very handy for you. Okay, so we'll go ahead and thread those needles. Super fast with that presser foot swinging out of the way and then locking our loopers for threading. <laughs> Just simply hover that thread and let it fly right through the machine. There we go. We're threaded. So now we're all threaded. So we have our upper looper, our lower looper, and our needles all threaded. And you simply touch the check mark and you're ready to go. Now one other feature I'm going to add is going to be the seam guide. And I love this seam guide because when we're stitching our handles, You'll notice on these handles that they are two colors. Mm -hmm. And I love this technique because it gives you what looks very intricate and hard to do, but it's not. So when we look at those finished handles, mm -hmm. you see how the fabric kind of wraps around from the back side over to the front mm -hmm. side. It's because so, you cut your strip for the tone on tone yep. a little bit so wider. Here we, yep, here we have our our pieces. Mm -hmm. So we had the back fabric that is two and three quarters inches wide and we have the center fabric which is one and a quarter inch wide with foam with attached. With foam already attached. So this makes it super easy when you're going to stitch and you are cutting both of your fabric pieces the same length. So you just line up that one seam first, the yep. long seam. Yep. So the long seam first. Now, when you're stitching, and I attach this seam guide because as you're stitching many times, uh, long lines of stitching, mm -hmm. your mind kind of tends to wander mm -hmm. or you and are your stitches interrupted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you want this to be nice and straight when you're stitching it so that, that the forms. edges the edge of the handle, the trim. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now as we stitch, we can use that seam guide just to hold the edge of our fabric. And you can stitch 
at full speed if you wanted to. And again, my needle is in the down position so that I can reposition without having my fabric wiggle around underneath or lose, lose my place. Okay, now we have one side stitched on and you can see how much wider your piece of fabric is going mm -hmm. to be. So we would simply and let's line open up. that seam and, and show everyone. You stitch just that long seam and that now one you inch. still have the backing fabric is still wider. Yeah. So we need to make a tunnel. So we need to make a little tunnel. So you'll just simply line up the opposite edge of the fabric on the long mm -hmm. seam and we're going to stitch exactly the same way. And don't worry about that tunnel. No, don't worry about the tunnel. And we have our stitch width set at the appropriate setting for the width of the, the strips of fabric that we're working with. So now you have it stitched and you see that there's that little tunnel, that mm -hmm. extra fabric creates that little tunnel that we have. And next what we're going to do is turn we'll our do some tube. With a fast turn. With a fast turn. And you have one long strap, a 22 inch strap. Mm -hmm. I have one long strap, mm -hmm. 22 inches long, and we're going to take this fast turn tube turner and it makes it so very easy to slide the uh, tube, the fast turn itself, right. into S the tunnel. And slide just that fabric slide tube it. over uh -huh. the fast turn tube. Right. Now, mm -hmm. you also There's have... a little pigtail turner here. Right. Can you see Hold that down. little pigtail that's there? Now that's going to slide up into this tube and we're going to take the foam side and we're going to fold it over the opening on the turner, the tube turner. Now I'm going to need to pull turning. this back and just take a look. You're and turning that little pigtail right. and revealing it through the other side of the foam. Right, so it pops out. right through mm -hmm. the foam. And it has a little twist in it mm -hmm. so that it doesn't so pull now, back through. when I pull on this, mm -hmm. I'm going to pull, pull, mm -hmm. pull, and slide. So it's kind of a two-handed mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. You're pulling on the little wire and pushing the fabric on the opposite mm -hmm. end. So now when you get to the point where the you can grab onto the fabric. Mm -hmm. It's out the other end. It's out the other end. And like magic. Look at that. Look at that. And you didn't even press that yet. And you have no. a completely uh, two-tone, completely turned and line strap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this technique is done where you actually place the foam into the tube turner. Mm -hmm. And I really like the way that, that we've done it this way because you don't have it, your fabric is not rolling mm -hmm. and shifting. It's not going to twist, it's staying because you stitched that lining fabric, that backing fabric, right to the foam, right through that top uh, accent fabric. Exactly. Beautiful, I love easy. the strap method. You know, and, and it looks hard, but it really mm -hmm. is easy, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Okay, now we have that strap completed. Let's grab our five in one We'll do a Measuring. five one sliding gauge. Sliding gauge. And I know it's four inches from the outside edge, right Pam? Right. So this time, when we place our straps onto the bag itself, measure over four inches, and then use the outside edge of your handle and just align it with that measuring gauge, which having that long length there makes it so easy and makes sure it makes assures you, let me put it that way, mm -hmm. that your strap is straight and it's not sitting kind of cattywampus. And you have your fabrics right side together. So if you peek under mm -hmm. here, that pretty side of the fabric is to the pretty side of the tote. Right. Make sure you do that. And how about we wonder clip that? Yep. We want to wonder clip that in place. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So four inches from the outside. Make sure you have mm -hmm. no twists. 
Yep, no twist. And mm -hmm. if you have a salvage edge or mm -hmm. your foam didn't yeah, go all the way to the end, you can trim it off or let your mm -hmm. machine trim oh, it let off. Let your machine so, trim it. Pam said, Pam gave us permission to let this machine yeah. trim it. Why well, do extra work? If your machine mm -hmm. can do it for mm -hmm. you, then we'll just let the machine mm -hmm. clip, cut it off for us. All right. Now, we have been sewing. We sewed with our cutting width at eight when we made the handles. So mm -hmm. we're just going to bring the, we're going to sew our handles on. Okay. We're going to sew the handle on and we want to narrow down our width. So I've narrowed down the width, and as I stitch, I'm just going to stitch straight across. So you're stitching on the edge, trimming a few threads. Yeah, just kind mm -hmm. of skimming the edge. And mm -hmm. again, you can use that seam guide. Mm -hmm. And if when you come to your handle, you need to kind of reposition or make sure it's all laying flat, use your freehand system. And since we're going to cut this off, I might mm -hmm. move my seam guide out of the way. That blade comes up nice and high and it will just make quick work of trimming that. Exactly. And so you know where you're stitching, the little mm. indented mark. We talked about the raised marks on the foot, but the indention is actually where your cutting blade is. So this way you can still align it and know that you're going to be stitching straight. Okay. And it's, it's attached. looking like Your a bag, is attached. isn't it? Starting so to look like a bag. So we do that to the back of the bag also. Mm -hmm. So you do it to both pieces of, both, both mm -hmm. parts of the bag. Mm -hmm. All right, now we can't leave our overlock stitching without having some other fancy thread too. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is, next step, is to attach our lining. And I love mm -hmm. this lining technique because it has a little bit of a peekaboo here at the top mm -hmm. where the lining sticks out. But you'll probably notice on here also is that the lining isn't top stitched, but it's held it's, in place. It's invisibly anchored. Invisibly mm -hmm. anchored. That's right. I like that. that this is uh, a great technique. technique. And you showed me this years ago for quilt binding. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use a thread that is fusible. So this thread being fusible, when you touch this and your fabric with an iron, it's going to adhere those layers together. Mm -hmm. So as we did here for the top of our bag, so when you do decide to top stitch, either with a chain stitch, cover stitch, or on your sewing machine, it holds this in place and you don't have to have a whole bunch of clips all the way mm -hmm. around. And you'll see that a little bit later when we fold the lining to the inside of the bag and give it a little press. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're placing that in our lower looper. So we place our fusible thread in the lower looper. Now you could, tie on the thread if you wanted to, but with air threading, why would you want to no do need. that, right? So we're going to, again, we're going to get some practice here on threading. Engage your threading tube. And you hear that little snip, mm -hmm. you know then that it's all ready to go. So again, in our lower looper, we just place that thread. There you go. And it slides right through. So you want to make sure that it's all the way through your machine. So give it a little check and you see that the there thread comes right out there. Now here's the trick. When you're working with the fusible thread in your lower looper, we're going to be attaching our lining. So when we attach the lining, we want to make sure that we place the lining on the right side. And this piece is measuring 16 by 15. When we okay. did our cutting, whoops, when we did our cutting, it's, it, the width is the same as the bag, but it's a little bit longer. The lining is a little bit longer. Yeah, we're going to show you what you, we're going to do that. Just right, make sure that you, you have, line up. Mm -hmm. as long as you have the top of your bag lined up, mm -hmm. you've, you're now going to increase your width all the way up to nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll help cover those stitches that we previously previously stitched. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, and I know you put the fusible thread in the lower looper, so I know I want to face the side I want the fusible thread on. Down. down. That's right. So simply take your fabric, place it underneath the presser foot, and stitch. 
Now, here's one thing that I do wanna share with you. When you're starting to stitch areas, it could be the handle, you, it could be when we stitch our uh, lining on, and especially when we sew the sides of our bag, I want to increase the tension or control that I have only on the left needle thread. Because when we sew th items that are really thick and heavy with the serger stitch, you might end up with what I like to call smile lines mm -hmm. because you'll see a little bit of a gap. Almost right like a ladder the, stitch. Almost like a mm -hmm. ladder. And now we can uh, eliminate that by just changing the tension in the mm -hmm. left needle. Yep, because we have total stitch mm -hmm. control on our machines, we have that ability to go ahead and make that adjustment. So again, we're simply just stitching straight across the top edge, simple straight stitching all the way across the top of both the front and the back side of our bags. And there's that seam. That seam you stitched and yep. on the, the regular thread is on this and side. And on the other side, you'll see, well, you won't really be able to see it because mm, it's, it's all, almost invisible. It's almost invisible, mm -hmm. but we have that mm -hmm. fusible thread in our lower looper, okay? All right, so now you'll have two pieces that have lining, handle, and bag. Mm -hmm. Flat construction. Flat construction. And we're going to fold this over so your seam, your seam is going to stand up. So we would go, you wouldn't want to press this because remember, you've got your Not fusible yet, thread. Right. We still have to sew the side so seams. So you finger press, mm -hmm. you finger press. Roll it to the back. Roll it to the back. Wrong sides together. And you'll notice you that trim. your lining mm -hmm. is longer. So you're going mm -hmm. to trim this, trim mm -hmm. it so that it's even. Otherwise mm -hmm. your lining is going to be mm -hmm. so much bigger inside of your bag. But you don't always know, depending upon the depth of the seam allowance. You your thickness, your seam mm -hmm. width, your fabric thickness. Exactly. This, this is great. You're yeah. assured that your lining won't fall short. Exactly. I like that technique. Exactly. And it's just, I'm sure we could find some way mm -hmm. to use that little scrap somewhere along right. the line. Right. Oh, I'm sure of that. Right. Okay. So we're going to line that up. We're going to cut off and have the front and the back. So you'll have mm -hmm. two separate units. Mm -hmm. which looks just like this. So now we've also trimmed out, we've trimmed out the mm -hmm. corners on our, it up here. on our lining as all well. All four corners. All four corners. Mm -hmm. So we've trimmed out a two inch square, square. out of each right. side of, the, of all Every, four pieces. Right, in the lower bag, front and back, and in the lining. Mm -hmm. each side and that forms the gusset. Right. That is the gusset that gives, gives the bag depth. Correct. And, and you can make that as big or as small as you would mm -hmm. like. Uh, I, on this particular mm -hmm. bag, I liked it two about inches is a nice two size. inches. Right. Two inches in size. And for every inch you shorten it or make the gusset, your bag will get that inch that shorter. That much shorter. Mm -hmm. That's right. So keep that in mind too. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I'm changing thread one more time, mm -hmm. just the last time here, and I am going to place the standard overlock thread into my lower looper again. We wouldn't want to construct that side seam with the fusible thread because it's fusible. It's just mm -hmm. unnecessary. It's yes, unnecessary. Save that for your next fusible right. uh, technique. Project. Yes. Okay, now, once we have this all threaded, you can leave your width on nine because it, the, the side seams, this, you're constructing the side seams and the bottom mm -hmm. seam, and that will just give you a little bit wider area. And again, my needle tension, thread control is set a little bit higher. So you don't have those ladder stitches showing. Correct. All right, so we're going to sew the length of both sides and across the bottom of our bag. So you're sewing the lower seam right now, the bottom lower bag seam. Yep. This seam. Mm -hmm. All right, 
Now, when you sew your side seams, you want to make sure that the side seam where the lining and the top part of your bag for both front and back are aligned right on top of each Match other. Match that because mm -hmm. that makes a difference right here. Correct. That will assure that your front and your back uh, lining and seams align. Align with each other. And again, here's a great, and you can use your wonder clips there. Please, I'm going to tell everybody right here at the camera, don't use pins. Because with this thick fabric that you're working with, your pins are going to get lost inside of this foam. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want to have to do is bring your machine in for a new cutting blade mm -hmm. because you've right. cut over a pin. And you'll bend your pins. This is not for pinning. Yes. So using Wonder Clips is definitely the way to go mm -hmm. when you're stitching with this heavier fabric. Now, I am going to just move directly from that thick foam right onto my lining. And you stitch all the way down the side. And no adjustment was necessary. The machine just adapted it, right it to that fabric change. From one right to the other. Mm -hmm. Now you're lining up so the we're gonna line up opposite. The opposite side. And this time you can either stitch always from the heavy to the thin or the thin to the heavy. It, it really does not matter. I just kind of like to go clockwise or counterclockwise all mm -hmm. the way around the direction that I'm stitching. You'll notice I have not stitched the bottom of my lining yet, and I'm going to do that as soon as I'm done with this side. But see how easy it just cuts right through or stitches mm -hmm. right through that foam? That's because we have a DC motor. I was just going to say yeah. that. It's direct current. Right. That piercing, that needle piercing power right. is amazing. Okay, so now the bottom of our bag, mm -hmm. we're going to leave an opening mm -hmm. down here. So this is the lining. So there's an opening in the lining mm -hmm. for turning. For so turning. that's what you're leaving uh, room for now, about yep. six inches. Well, yeah, about six inches or uh, just enough space so you can get your mm -hmm. hand mm -hmm. in there. Now, when you're stitching, and you are wanting to come off the edge mm -hmm. of your fabric. We're used to curving off. We're used, to, I call those on-ramp and off-ramp mm -hmm. stitches. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is bring my needle to the highest position, just simply tap, tap of the, the foot. back of my foot pedal, and I raise with my knee, and I turn my fabric completely out of the way and sew off. Now, I have a nice squared off edge, rather than, rather than having mm -hmm. that off ramp stitch. Right. This is like a sewing machine, a standard sewing off. machine. It stops. Yeah. All right. Then when you're ready to sew on, go on the ramp, right? You want to make sure your needle is in the highest position and you just simply pull the stitches off of the stitch former until you see individual threads. Now then you can slide your fabric right up underneath the presser foot again, lower it in place and stitch and you have a square, squared off beginning. Opening, and we didn't mm -hmm. trim away any, lose any fabric? No. Nope. Seam width? Mm -mm. Great tip, Pam. None at all. Okay, now we're going to do, we're going to box each one of our corners or the bottom edge of our bag. So you simply pinch to line up the seams from the bottom of your bag to the side of your bag. And this is the lining, but we'll do it on all four sides. Yep. And there's only four short seams left. Mm -hmm. This bag is made completely on the serger. Right. I love that. Because, you know, it's my favorite. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Is this the countdown? Mm -hmm. Four. Three. And with your thread finger. tails, you don't want to cut those off right at the edge. You want to feed those back under and maybe use a little fray block. You know, they're um, they're pretty well sealed. If you and leave if your you thread leave tails. your yeah, if you leave your thread tails, and you can leave a little longer thread tail because this is all going to be on the inside of your bag. Mm -hmm. So you could use some fray block on there if you if you wanted to, but it really 
isn't... Or leave your thread tails. Or leave your thread tails. Good idea. That's right. Now, when it comes to doing the side of your, the, the bag part, not the lining, I do want to fold one seam one direction and one seam the opposite direction. That'll eliminate the bulk happening on all one side. Right. Now, our machine could definitely handle that because we have that higher cutting blade. I'm gonna stitch that one more time because it, my bag got caught on the side of my That's the beauty table. of it. Yeah, exactly. Three stitch, do over, you get a do over. All right, last seam, here we go. Now what I do like to do though, is look at my bottom seam mm -hmm. to make sure my seam is folding in the same direction. Again, with the freehand system there, you have total control of your fabric the whole time you're stitching. All right, there we Four go, Deanna. little gusset seams, right? All right, now, it's time for us to turn the bag. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of fold the bag. That foam just collapses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just turn this. The exciting part. You no. Know. So it is important to make sure you have your opening in your lining. All right, mm -hmm. here we go. And it's always easier at home when you're not showing the camera. I know, and, and when you're <laughs> not <laughs> behind the machine here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just keep pushing it all the way through. I like to reach my hand inside and push out the corners on the bottom of the bag. Look at this, we've made a whole bag right mm -hmm. here. Right. On screen. Start to finish. Now we'll have matching bags. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's just a little fussy turning and fluffing up your bag. And just by See handling. How it popped right back right, up. And just by handling your bag and stitching on it, those chalk markings are gone. Oh, yeah, gone. Gone. Completely gone. Mm -hmm. And this, the bottom part of your bag, you can just press this. And if you want, mm -hmm. you could set your machine back up for a chain stitch. Mm -hmm. And you could mm -hmm. stitch that, stitch right across there. Mm -hmm. Now when we push our lining back into the bag, and you notice on Deanna's bag, again, we had the fusible thread, and we have the fusible thread here, but we haven't fused it yet. Right. It's just a little trip to the ironing board, right over the end right. of the ironing board, and pressing, pressing and that under. it's going to hold that. Wrap it under and press because you had that fusible thread in the lower looper, That's it's right. fuse tack. Now you could put it back under the machine and do a little uh, chain stitching around, reset your machine for a chain stitch and go. Otherwise, yeah. your bag is done. Otherwise have, your bag is matching completed. Bags. So I think that, mm -hmm. and there's our handles that we did. You know, fully those, lined. Fully lined. And those are foam. Two color. Filled. Two color mm -hmm. handles. Mm -hmm. So. It's fabulous, Pam. Great Amazing. job, Deanna. Great job, Pam. What a creative, clever cover stitch bag. <laughs> and you really taught us how to use all our stitches on our machine and make a beautiful bag. And have some fun with them. Right, you it know, is fun. They, they, they don't always have to be used in a functional mm -hmm. way. I always say, come off the edge and be creative right, with your surgery. Right, Pam, you took me off the edge today in your flat construction techniques in this handle. Flat construction handle techniques are just clever. <laughs> I hope you come back again to Stitch It Looking Sisters and show it. us more of your wonderful serger techniques. Thank you. You're welcome. We hope you've enjoyed this Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this clever cover stitch bag project along with a limited number of project bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitched Sisters is made possible by Bernina, Clover, Benertex Fabrics, June Taylor, OESD Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design, and ShopNZP.com. Bernina, made to create.